So, um, so we're talking about astral projection tonight. Yes. So what do you think of what someone says? What's astral projection? Uh, it's where you, um, the process of detaching your consciousness from the physical body. It's leaving. Excellent. I, I, I just, you know, there's a lot of books on astral projection. I thought, well, what should I share with everybody? And I just found my encyclopedia, which I have on my shelves. Mm -hmm. encyclopedia, so I love that book. book. I have it. Yep. 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 I got this years and years ago. It's a great book, right? So that's what I would read what it says here, if that's okay. Um, astral projection is to will one's soul mind to leave the physical body enclosed in, uh, ethereal bo in a ethereal body and travel to distant, distant localities. A, journey is pre-planned and pre-programmed, requires a relaxed state of consciousness to begin. Technique varies with each person, transpires in a conscious or unconscious state. B, astral senses are fully alert while the physical body resembles a, a corpse. Silver cord is where I learned about the silver cord. Yep. Silver cord, and which is connected to the physical body to the spirit body. Isn't that great? Um, the silver cord is then, let's put a place here. Uh, yeah. Silver cord keeps the two bodies attached and breathing and heart uh, pulsation synchronized. C, astral body moves about in the astral plane, a foreign planet or another location on this planet. Detached body is physically visible, clairvoyantly visible or invisible. So look, that could be haunted house. People think, oh, this place is haunted. It could be someone's astral bodies are going running around. It's, it's Absolutely. True. Well, let me tell you what happened to me because I actually had an astral projection experience uh, 40 years ago. Actually, I was 24 years old and I was visiting my cousins and my aunt in the South in Mississippi. So I had no idea of any of this. And one day we were, I was in, a, in an energy I can only explain as I was very clear. There were, I had no drugs, very, very clear and high, high in a heightened state of energy, actually. It was during so, the, the day, daytime? It was during the day. And then in what the were evening. You at that for a moment, Kelly? I, well, I'll tell you. So uh, it was the strangest thing. Uh, we were playing cards. We were playing cards. I'd never played cards. I'm, to this day, I'm not a card player. But we were playing cards. And every, I was in such a zone, James, that I knew I was good. I knew every card that was coming up. I knew everything about everything. They yeah. thought I was cheating. And I what? said, I'm not cheating. I know you're going to pull an ace of clubs. You're going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't explain it. So then they got mad and they said, we're going to bed because <laughs> I was winning like over and over and over and over. But my energy was very, very clear and heightened. So wow. we go to bed as I'm lying down, all of a sudden I'm out of my body. I'm at the roof of the, the room I'm in. I saw a silver cord attached. I knew at that exact moment that I could be anywhere. I looked down at my body. I was, I had no fear. And I thought this is something, ha what's happened to me. And I just, I went through a wall and I went in to visit my cousin who was asleep. I could tell you what she was wearing. I went into another room where my aunt collected dolls. So I had all looked at all these oddball dolls. And then I went to the roof of the house and then I jumped over to the roof next door because I was just curious. And then I started thinking, oh boy, maybe, and I knew at this moment I could be anywhere at any time in the, in the, anything. There was no, anything that would hold me back. If I could, I could be anywhere. I could be on Mars. I could be in another dimension. I could be in time travel. I knew I could be anywhere at that moment. Wow. But then something said to me, I think it was my own fear actually, yeah. go back. And I, I that fast went back into my body. Wow. And that's wow. when I knew that the soul goes on. The soul has, the body is only here for us, but we, we're outside, we live out, we can live outside of the body. You had a, a sense of expansion that, and that opened you up totally, right? That totally opened up your Huge, your huge. And that's from amazing. what I, from what I understand, there are four ways to experience astral travel. Oh, and the, the yeah. first <laughs> one would be unintentionally or unconsciously. So humans have been traveling in astral since forever, forever. And that would be if you guys had like a common, like a memory of floating or flying in your dreams, that's would be, that's also an astral projection. But what happened to me, the second way is unintentional consciously. This happens when you accidentally leave your body and retain lucidity without previous training or knowledge about astral projection. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it was this energy. I just up and out. Wow, wow! It was un. It was consciously, but it was. I was. It was unintentional. I didn't even know that this existed. Wow. 
And a third way is intentional and un but unconsciousness. So when you're unconscious, so you try to project and you might succeed, but it might be a lucid experience instead. This sometimes happens with beginners. Yes. But the best way to do it is intentionally with consciously do it. And that's right. probably a more tricky way to do it, but so, it takes practice. It takes practice. And, and, and Robert Monroe at the Moen, yes. Monroe Institute, I think it's passed over now. It's the first person I learned about, has a program about that. And you, it's called Hemisync, um, the different oh. spheres of the brain, the sides of the brain, and get them in a certain alignment where it's an exit to leave astrally. Mm -hmm. And it's a great program. The Monroe Institute is fantastic, everybody. Yeah. You should check that out. It's a really good space and a lot of good, wonderful, um, right. uh, high-minded things going on. And oh, astral projection yeah. is one of them. And there are ways to do it co right correctly. And mm -hmm. even position the body that you should be in, be laying down or sitting down, or and what's in the mind. What's right. it's, There's all these different uh, aspects that go into it, for sure. Right, yeah. right. And in fact, you want to make sure, well, there are certain, there are a lot of techniques. Um, yes. That's what Robin Rowan teaches, different techniques. Different techniques. And I noticed with what happened to me, it was a my mind was awake, but my body was asleep. Oh, interesting. interesting. And that's where you want to get yourself into that that state. And it's sometimes, almost like a trance state, like a semi-trance I was just going to say it's yeah. a trance state, and you can actually um, achieve that by going into a trance state. Yeah. And it, it means this. It's like deep relaxation in a light trance gets you into astral projection hmm. interesting, interesting. I, I i don't i it's consciously remember i don't consciously remember i i, I think i just okay. I, I, somehow it's, it's kind of foggy but I, I think it was one time long long time ago i, I, I don't think i was doing this work I, I think i was looking over the un and there was some things going on with the, the league of nations i think that was one and the one i do remember was and it was it was not astral projection per se it was we all leave the body night we astral project or and we get the other mm -hmm. side a different level but we use that astral body to get there and i and we'll come back to this lower level this dense vibration in the morning we wake up with that that state yeah. and i remember coming back into the body but it was it was really strange kelly it was like coming down on like a um a funnel i guess you'd say okay. and these fragments of people like arms hands were just screaming and yeah and I was like, they wanted to attach themselves. And I said, I don't know where I came from. I said, are you of love or God, you love? And that just, it disappeared. And I was back, oh, oh my how... body awake. But that was. Well, yeah. and, you know, that's really interesting because um, one of the questions that was asked is, is astral projection dangerous? Well, yeah, you know, it's funny because Kelly, my other friend, Kelly, that you know, who was here this weekend, we're writing a show about, um, I'm not going to mention, but it takes kind of this certain aspects of this. And we were talking about that too, that there are many spaces and places that you go to when upon death, as rejection, you know, the experiences, not everybody goes to a happy place. Sometimes they talk about their places that people go to and people who have had near the experiences will talk and say, it wasn't nice for me. I felt like it was in hell or I felt, you know, it was some, and this has been research and scientific um, studies do you, have been done. Here. Do you think yeah. that's because of their belief system? I think that's a point to it. I think it's an aspect of it. I think it's their belief system, I think it's wh where their mind is at, how limited right. are their minds, right. how limited is the mind. Again, how they uh, use love in life, how they just been away, away from the human person, mm -hmm. the human experience, and evolved or expanded. So that all comes back to us when we leave the body and at death. We all like go back and there's this is what you do with your life. Here's your report card. I like so, that. Here's your report I, card. I, I, part of my work, really my goal, my work. Is, it's not to really, well, get people to learn about mediumship. No, really not. That's not really what yeah. it is. What it really is, is if people were more aware and conscious yeah. about how they treated people, thoughts, words, and deeds, and that those thoughts had energy and there was a look to it, there's a density to it, that that yeah. would affect everybody at a tapestry uh, that influences everyone. They would be more responsible for what they put out into the ether. And I think that's really what I want. That's my goal in this lifetime to open oh. them that way. You know? Absolutely. That's always been your goal, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I did school. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I, I learned from spirit, they said that. They said, please. And that's why I wrote the book, I Finished Business, because I got tired of hearing spirits say, if only I knew this when I was alive in the physical body, I would have made a different choice or live differently. Right. But, yeah. Wow. So true. Well, astral projection also is referred to out of body experience. So some people would know Same it by thing. that. Same thing. Same, Same thing. thing. So just, yeah, so very true. there's a thing, but you know what lucid dreaming is? 
So Explain it again, please. Well, I'm, lucid dreaming is where you're, aware, you, you're, you're right. aware you're dreaming and you can make a different choice. You can think differently. You can stop it. You can make a change in the lucid dreaming. It's so real, but it's different than astral projection. It's wow. different than astral projection, though. Um, some because people think choices. it's. Is that why? Because you have choices? That you're, you're consciously aware that you have a choice? Well, because what? when you astral project, and only because I had this experience, you are in the astral plane. You That's are true. in another area. It, it's different than remote viewing. Remote viewing takes place on um, in this dimension. But when you're in right. the astral plane, this is different because this is where you you leave your body. And it's where often, would you say it's where we start to go when, once we pass pass over? Yes, 100%. in the astral plane. We actually go over there before that. We usually go over there probably well seven months before we leave the body. We'll usually visit there more, mm -hmm. um, and um, depends on if there's an illness or where, you know depends on who's right. exactly involved. But we become very aware. It's so funny. I was speaking to a friend Kelly, my friend Kelly, was with me. It was me, and yesterday we spoke about the older people, and you know when they're getting older, they start um, you know. It does things don't matter as much to them, and you know, that's fine. And you don't know, things you can throw things out, and I think that's part of it. I think it's like we yeah. evolve, like you know, we learn, and then we it's time to go. And I think our soul knows that it gets, it gets us prepared, of course, it does. Yeah. And we never go alone, everyone should learn that there's always oh. a team around us, you know, of those living and those not, so. right? You're never alone. Yeah. You know, the other thing that I find so interesting about astral projection you don't have to be an empath, you don't have to be a psychic, you don't have to be a medium anybody it's open to anybody it's a soul at any time oh, it's the yeah. soul the soul's journey yes it's true it's so interesting um and why do people even bother to do astral projection why would they even want to do it to begin with it's an interesting question isn't yeah. it yeah so that's when we go back to the first thing i learned when i was the bodhi tree with the a's mm -hmm. astral projection what is this and and i'm really I'm wondering what's some of Robert Monroe's techniques and the institutes like, well, why would that, why would people be interested in this? And part of it, they said, was because it helped them, exactly what I just spoke about, open up spiritually, become more aware. That's it. Different. That's, That's really it. What it is. There are many roads, right? There are many roads mm -hmm. to the light, to the journey, and there are many religious right. roads, roads. And who says one is better than the other? It's just depends on that. So it feels experience and what feels right, what resonates to that. Right. You know, I was reading about this and it's interesting. Some people do it so they can get creative ideas. So they they oh, might do time that. travel. Like that. Isn't that I love interesting? That. They might go one. back in time. They might go in the ahead of time. They might go looking for different creative aspects. Isn't that interesting? That's a good one. I never thought of that. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, that's this is interesting. Um, I think we do every night we go to sleep, we do go to. Yes meetings with we meet our guys our family i think we go to classes and workshops and i know this is so interesting i'm painting my kitchen and we're going to get the new paint color and then i have to have it go into the house and I'm like the whole house and it's hard to have a yellow going in the whole house right so i'm trying <laughs> well right i'm trying some colors about my mind literally in my mind and yesterday i was um i don't know fell asleep and that was a nice light nap and i had the most vivid dreams about colors and it was like wow these levels of colors like blues and browns and uh, like colors I've never really seen before but yeah. so you probably were in the astral plane I think I took a workshop in paint <laughs> color color but, form but that absolutely you could have done that that would make we sense do that. we do that in that sleep state we tend to go to um studies right. workshop you know we do we tend to go to the hall of learning if we're going to call it that mm -hmm. there's so much and as human beings we get so caught up in we got to give this a label and a name and a place and it's so right. beyond that it's and, it's and so like true. Dimension or a sixth dimension. How do you describe what's in a seventh dimension with a three dimensional uh, vocabulary? It's, you can't. You can't do it. You can't. Oh, no. uh, I mean, once I had that experience, that was life changing. I knew what I knew, and yeah. nobody was going to tell me anything different. And, and you until you've had that experience, you can't you can't go back. You can't go back. My friend yeah, Kelly, you can't can go. you can't go back. <laughs> no. Um, Let's see. So there's a lot of a lot of questions. Oh my gosh! Um, a lot of people say they receive creative inspiration in their dreams. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. People would do that. And if you put that out there to the universe, you say tonight I'm going to sit, now, like I'm writing a book right now. So it's a fictional mm -hmm. book, and trying to get ideas. And I, my dream state is I'm asking for ideas, and I've had some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, you can you can surpass your bodily limitations so if you are handicapped or if you are you have some challenges physically 
when you astral project, you do not. How interesting. As we're speaking, I heard a guy come in and say something to me. Please. They said also, they said also that you cannot, um, wow, interesting, that you can expand your soul self in that astral, in the astral world. You can, whether it's in classes, you can expand that what your souls come back here and learning. You can also in the astral project, you can learn to expand that in some way or change choices of certain things. Yeah. They, just said that. they just said that. Oh, I love that. And, and you can visit you with your uh, guides too. Yes, you guys are there. Sure. Right. Um, and, Joe, and they're worlds within worlds within worlds. Within world. So when you think of the astral plane too, just like right. the three dimensional, it's all layers and layers and layers and layers. Worlds within worlds within worlds is really what it is. Right. It's the rainbow. It's really the rainbow, if you will. Right. Um, so wait, Margaret Cowie says, I was dreaming. I was with a friend. I was dreaming in quotes. I was with a friend more than 3000 miles away. Then I woke up. I couldn't speak or move my body. A paralyzed. She was like paralyzed yep. just for a few seconds. I forget what it's called, but it isn't the only time I've experienced this. I was told I was probably awakened suddenly, and it just took a few seconds for my soul to return. I've also experienced a, a levitation while working on a book I was writing. Yeah, uh, Margaret, I understand exactly what yeah, you just probably. said. Oh, well, that, that makes I've had that kind of experience where yeah. you're paralyzed, you can't move, and yeah, I, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. an interesting one. That I think she came back too early. That, that, that the, the body had to catch up. I like that. I like that. I was just gonna say, it's, isn't that amazing? Yeah, really right. interesting. Like mm -hmm. We'll have to do a show on uh, levitation too at some point. Well, yes, because was it your grandfather was a table tipper? He was a table tipper, and I've had that experience. So yeah, it's. Yeah, I had to walk out of the room with me. Literally, we had to get up and walk with the room. We was walking right out of the seance room. And it was really. Isn't that something? I mean, ah. there's so many things that that you know we do. Well, that we Force, the intelligence of the spirit world is beyond our right really. okay so somebody cindy harper says i have a question do you believe in sleep hypnosis and do you think it works um i don't really know much about sleep hypnosis other than if you're talking about uh trying to get yourself into a trance i don't is that what she means james i'm not sure what you mean you know, it goes back to when i used to work with brian weiss who was a psychotherapist okay. and he used um a lot of um if you will dream states um as much for sleeping, sleep hypnosis. Yeah, I, I think you have to set up, um, you have to have an intention and you got to have a why, you know, and before you go to sleep every night, there's mm -hmm. some kind of program that you're looking, you're listening to, that you're sleeping on your head to help you sleep. It's, I think it's just calming yourself down. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of regression therapy is good for that. There's so many aspects to why we have uh, problems with, um, you know, certain things. So we're really, you have to see where the problem stems from originally where it could be traumatic childhood in this life or another lifetime or absolutely know, so aspects you're going to look at that absolutely but it's interesting that you just said set the intention so if yeah, you always. do want to begin the astral projection you set an intention before you go to sleep and then you do positive affirmations and the positive affirmations will be i perform exit techniques every time i awake i always right. remember my intention to exit Right. I am good at astral projection. I right. will easily exit my body. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So you're setting a program up. You're you're making your right. that's, that's going to be. We always should do that with everything in life. So that's going to be so fun. Thanks, 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 everybody. Renee. Thanks, Renee. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean left. Yeah! The James and Kelly Show.